All right, guys, it's double yabo time. A yabo yabo. All right. All right, this yabo was uh, something that my friend Laura from Florida, Florida Laura, very sweet girl, um, she sent me. And I don't know if she wants me to open it on here. Looks, uh, it's round, <laughs> kind of, you can tell. Uh, and I, I really don't know what it is. It's a surprise, but I'm going to open it on camera anyway. And then if I don't want to show it, then I'll just edit it out. Uh, and then this Yabo, I am waiting, was waiting for. This is from California. This is a true Yabo because this is a tobacco Yabo. And uh, that's awesome. Uh, this was actually a trade I did. I traded some hot sauce. And I'm going to have a video in the future about how to buy the hot sauce because that kind of like just fell off the radar there for a while. I do have a bunch of it left. And I'm going to kind of reorganize everything. And I'll, I'll do a video about that if anyone's interested. Because there's a lot of new people who haven't seen those videos either. But uh, anyway, this Yabo is from my good friend in California, NickerFB79. Now, this is a guy that's kind of uh, new to YouTube. But uh, he is just headfirst in the videos. Really nice guy. Um, definitely a pipe-related channel. So if you're into that, check him out. Link will be in the description box for him. Uh, I like him. <laughs> He's a really cool guy. <clears throat> and he seems to have the same dry humor that I have. Um, this The sarcasm kind of funny stuff going on there. And uh, it, it's funny. He's a funny guy. But he's very nice. And uh, I sent him some hot sauce. He did a little uh, unboxing or yabo for that. And he was uh, very appreciative of it. So he sent me some tobacco. So now, let me just make this clear. <laughs> Between what I already have, which is in the case behind me, which you can see on the second shelf there. As well as here, if I get my big fat head out of the way, you can see that the tall knife case is filled with case knives, which I'll be doing videos on in the future, as well as the one on the bottom right with the black has a couple more in there as well. So lots of knife videos to come as well for anyone who's wondering about that. Now, I did notice under the tape here is a very suspicious curly hair. I don't like finding. Let me show you that. It's above my name, underneath my pinky. I want to show his address just in case. I don't know if you could see that. You can't make it out. Stupid webcam quality. It's a little curly hair too, Nick. I don't like mysterious little curly hairs. But nonetheless, I'm sure I like what's in the box. So let me break into this. Now, Nick is a pacifist. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, in fact, when he did the unboxing, he didn't have a knife. But he manhandled it. And it's a good thing I threw some uh, some knives on those hot sauce bottles for him. So now he has something open future boxes. But today, as far as a knife, part of my EDC, I probably did an EDC video on it already. But the Sebenza, awesome. By the way, I took the lanyard off. Um, it's like the first time I ever took it off since I've had the knife. I just figured, eh, I don't use it. So I took it off. Uh, plus, I don't want it pulling out of my pocket, something to snag on. So anyway, whoa. This is when you open this. It, it's like it's uh, there's an aura about it. I just love this knife. I mean, there's you got to really be into a hobby to like love it that much. I can't imagine like someone else who's into stamps like looks at a stamp and goes, "Oh my god, not the 1942 duckhead with the four you know eyeball stamp of yesteryear." <laughs> this is my holy grail stamp. This is my holy grail knife. Uh, there's plenty of my other knives that I want. Of course, there's like that list of stuff you have to try before you die. The Chris Reeves Benza, you know, a Strider variant, whatever Strider you want to try, the uh, Rick Hinderer XM18. I mean, these are kind of just like the the biggest known folders. But for anyone who's watching this, particularly Nick, who knows nothing about knives, um, can care less. So let me just get into the unboxing. All right, so here we go. Yeah, this is a, a tobacco yabo. Tobacco for hot sauce. Strange trade, right? Oh, my God, I'm not even showing you the cutting. How dare I? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Kia in this box. All right. So, how can I creatively show you cutting and not cut myself? I'm happy today. Can you tell? Nothing specific happened. I'm just happy. Feel good. I'm breaking all the cutting rules, okay, just so I can show you the cutting action here. Oh, you know what? Crap. Duh, there's a bunch of tobacco in here, probably in bags, I'm sure, so I don't want to cut into everything. Oh, no. Uh, did I? Did I? 
where I'm digging my blade in is a bunch of, oh man, man, does that smell good. There's a bunch of Ziploc bags, so I just barely hit them. I don't think I did hit them. All right, so, yeah, I'm opening this upside down and backwards and, and whatnot. Oh, wow. Dude, there's a lot of tobacco in here. The only thing I, I, we agreed upon in the trade was a tin of Patriot Flake, uh, which he had, like, a hoarding stash worth. Uh, I think he owned uh, half of the uh, amount of Patriot Flake that was produced. Um, and now, of course, he's giving away to everyone who wants to try it, so he'll have nothing left. Poor Nick. Um... But, uh, yeah, it was Patriot Flake and some other mysterious tin. And he hooked me up with all this stuff, so I can't wait to see what's in here. And my nose is running, and I don't have a tissue, and this is gross to... <laughs> you ever do this when you're a kid? Kind of on the sleeve? Yeah. What do you want me to do? You know, it's either going to pour out of my face onto this, uh, this yabo, or it's going to be wiped on my sleeve for now. You're going to have to deal with it. Oh, my God. There's just tons and tons of samples in here. Holy crap. Oh, no way. <laughs> All right. Again, as if I didn't have enough to try, the very first one I look at is the only one, well, one of maybe three or four that I don't have that I really, really, really wanted to try, and that is Stonehaven. Nick, you son of a gun. Oh, man. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, that smells good. It smells sweet and smoky. Actually, it's funny because it it looks just like delicious beef jerky, and it kind of smells like it. There's some more awesome beef jerky. Full Virginia Flake. My man Nick hooking me up. Old Habana Daydream. Hmm. Old Havana Daydream. Ah, that smells good too. This is probably annoying because you can't smell anything. And if you don't like pipe tobacco or smoking, you can really care less. Oh, you know what? It's not old. I can't read. It's C and D. Cornell and Deal. Habana Daydream. All right. Old. I'm so funny. Two friends, English chocolate. Wow, Nick. Oh my god. That smells like really good chocolate. You know, it smells like milk chocolate. Uh, some of the, like I have uh, Samuel Gowith's chocolate flake, and I think I have another chocolate blend, and they, it smells like a dark chocolate. It smells like milk chocolate. It smells really, really good. Two friends. These are all like awesome tobaccos that I heard about that. I really want to try. There's just too much crap to try. I have enough tobacco to last me the rest of my life. <sighs> Hamburger Veer Master. Wow. Hmm. Interesting smell. Doesn't particularly jump out as being awesome, but it smells pretty decent. Of course, you can't just go by smell. A lot of them taste so much different than smell. Uh, McClellan's Dark Dark Star. Man, it is so dark I can't even read the bag. This looks like a little <laughs> something you'd walk your dog with. Oh, that smells good. This actually smells like a spice you'd cook with. It smells like uh Similar to anise or like Chinese five spice. A little bit of licorice in there. It smells interesting. Very, very cool. Holy crap, dude. It's a never ending box. Just smaller. Cornell and Deals. Oh, no way. Cornell and Deals. Billy Bud. Pipe Friends. Favorite blend for like 300 of his videos. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's got a really interesting smell. Hmm. You know, it's funny, because you read about certain things, people talk about stuff, and you have, like, an idea in your mind. It's kind of like when you're reading a book, and then you see a... Or, yeah, when you're reading a book, and you get your own idea of a story, then you watch the movie version of it, and you're like, that's nothing like I thought that character would be. This isn't exactly what that is. 
It's actually more fragrant than it. I thought it would be like a straight up Latakia, smoky English, real thick and heavy. This smells like, a, and even with my drippy nose, I can smell it. It smells more tame than I thought. I thought it would be this wild stink fest, but it, it smells good. It's got some kind of uh, creaminess quality to it. Can't wait to try that. Hearth and Home Lakeland Brickle. Ooh, Lakeland Brickle. I have not heard of this one before. That is very floral. Actually, you know what? Nick just did a video not too long ago talking about one of the, the floral ones. I wonder if it's this one. Franklin Brickle. There's too many to remember all of them. It smells pretty good, though. I don't know if that's going to taste as strong. All right, we're getting there, folks. We're getting there. <laughs> Scotch Flake. Aromatic or scented. Scotch Flake. Is this, uh, is this Orlick Scotch Flake? I think I saw Dagner just do a video on that. Is this at all exciting watching me smell this stuff? Probably not. That smells good though. They all smell good. I don't have enough time in the day. You're killing me, Nick. In the best way possible. G&H. Bob's Chocolate Flake. Ooh, another chocolate flake. Interesting. And by the way, all these seem like they're the perfect moisture or more moist, so I can dry them out as opposed to being dry. I think it's harder taking a dry tobacco and trying to rehydrate it than drying out something that may be a little bit moist. Hmm. I'm not really picking up the chocolate. It smells smoky though. Smoky. Little shout out to Smoky Joe Tennessee. Smoky Joe TN, just because I was saying smoky and that's who popped in my head. <laughs> All right, G and H, Dark Bird's Eye. Never heard of this one. Hmm. Not particularly good smelling, but it doesn't smell bad. It just doesn't smell like anything special. But we will see. Who knows? Maybe this is my favorite one out of the whole bunch. All right, now, good lord, look at that. Thank you, Nick. Ah. Uh, Ha 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 Patriot Flake. Wow. Hmm. A Dan Tobacco. Very cool. Naturally sweet and spicy Virginia Flake. Awesome. I can tell you right now, uh, the Virginias are actually my least favorite smoke. And and most people would be like, what are you talking about? Virginia, straight Virginias, like the Orlick, Golden Slice. It's awesome. They don't really do much for me. And the more I have the, the Golden uh, Sliced, for me, the more it just seems bland. Uh, the first smoke was, it was okay. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't special. The second smoke was kind of like, same thing. But uh, I had maybe like four or five bowls of it in total so far. And every time I have it, it's more cigarette-esque, if that makes sense. It doesn't taste like a cigarette. And don't get me wrong. Cigarette, I mean, look, there's thousands and there are probably millions of cigarette smokers out there. And you can do your thing, but uh, it's gross to me. The smell of cigarette smoke, secondhand smoke. The taste of cigarettes is just disgusting. Um, or like it's totally much, much better than cigarettes. But it, for me, it's nothing like special. Like when I have a bowl of pipe tobacco and I'm enjoying a pipe, it's to relax. And it's really just to enjoy the flavor. Bold, rich, strong flavors. I don't necessarily want something that's kind of mild and bland. It just doesn't do it for me. Hopefully this will change my opinions of Virginia's. Plus I also have the, uh, the full Virginia's, full Virginia flake. Which Nick was so nice to give me a sample of, and I also had a tin of it. But that's what I was waiting for. Awesome. Patriot Flake. All right. Another surprise. Ooh, some more Erin Moore. Another one I have yet to try. But I like having uh, doubles because I'm going to cellar these, is what it's called, where you basically just hang on to it for a decade. Doesn't have to be that long, but a lot of tobaccos in the right environment will age with time. Okay, uh, maybe or maybe not do a video on that in the future. A lot of people think they're going to go bad. Ah, cool. GLP's Jackknife Plug. Look at that, it looks like a delicious brownie. And there's a jackknife on there, which I can certainly appreciate. Thank you very much. I may even cut this up with a jackknife, <laughs> just to go the extra mile. All right. 
I did avoid, by opening this upside down, I did avoid all the packaging popcorn. No, what, what do I call them? I, I, that's right. I call them popcorn, and there's someone out there who gets really annoyed and corrects me every time. Toim. Corrects me every time. <laughs> corrects me every time and says, dude, please, it is not packaging popcorn. It's packaging peanuts. Whatever. Same thing. Same difference. Like jumbo shrimp. That's cool. I was looking forward to this, even though I didn't know I was getting it. That's awesome. Another one that I just heard of that wanted to try. Wow. And a sweet, sweet little love note. As I like when all the... I used to say, oh, I got a letter. And you see all the pipe channels when they get these packages. They go, oh, it's a love note. So anyway, let's see what Nick has to say. Although he said a lot without a single word already. <clears throat> Dear Mr. Smith, Thank you for the lovely time last night. <laughs> Don't worry about it, though. I heard that that thing happens to guys quite often, especially when they get older. Why don't you go see a doctor, just to be sure? Love, Nick. Nick or FB79. P.S. How come you don't call anymore? Well, first of all, I like to address the issue that he's talking about. Um, it doesn't happen very often because not a lot of guys are that big. But uh, it's okay. You know, eventually the bleeding will stop and you'll be all right. So, uh, you know, just suck it up, man. Um, as far as not calling, well, I don't have a phone. There's <laughs> a lot of people I don't call on YouTube. But I am trying to get a phone so I can call lots of people like Pete from the Army Channel and uh, Mad Bad Voodoo. And there's so many guys out there I used to talk to on the phone. And I miss talking to them. And Nick, you will be on the list of people I talk to to help you fall asleep at night. So thank you very much for the note. Thank you so much for all this awesome stuff. I mean, just over the top, man. Over the top. And the whole office stinks so wonderfully. It's a pretty long yabo. All right, now I gotta open surprise from Laura. And I'm fairly sure that she has no idea that I'm opening this on camera, so I hope it's, you know, I hope it's okay. Again, grab my old Sabenza. I love it. Wait, wait, ready? Like glass. Okay. Holy crap. Holy crap. All right. Talk about coincidence. Letter. A nice letter. A private letter. Um... Look at this. I'll do a, a pipe lawyer unveiling. A phone. <laughs> Was I not just saying how much I need a phone? Wow. Well, that was, uh, holy crap. That was awesome. I, <laughs> that was really, really, really cool, Laura. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we've been chatting uh, on the email stuff, and uh, basically the note just says that uh, it's easier to just talk on the phone. <laughs> that is, that's like the, one of the funniest things that's happened in a while. Yeah, that's a, a coincidence and a half. I swear to God, Scouts Honor. I, I forget, honestly, I forget how to do the Scouts. I think it's like that. Anyway, um, I really had no idea that was a phone, and I think it's hilarious that I was just mentioning that I need a phone to call Nick because he's so sad I don't call. Wow. That was awesome, Laura. Thank you so much. Ironically, I will send you an email to thank you first, and then I will call you. Yeah, that, that's an interesting uh, yabba -o. yabba yabba do. All right. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, I really appreciate it, as always. Admire the Sabenza before we go and the other EDC companion just in case you're too lazy to watch the EDC videos Spyderco police you know, let's Put these bad boys next to each other. There we go Today's EDC honestly one of the perfect EDC combinations for for blades and uh, Although I'm constantly changing because I'm always testing different things. I will certainly uh, Go back to this combination. I think it's perfect You know if anything 
I will uh, save this at home on some days, and I'll take the Spyderco Police in addition to the very, very awesome Gavco Custom, which you guys have seen many times, and you will see many times more. Or possibly new fixed blade from my friend Sniper Mac up in Canada. Um, and this was not, actually, he's not the original owner. Kylie, Knives and Stuff, had this before him, and he modified it. Should I just show you now, or should I wait to do another video, do a little tease? Little knife tease. Yes, this was, uh, it was Sniper Max. I traded him some stuff. By the way, buddy, your stuff is in the mail on the way up to the Great North, the Great White North. Anyway, it's going that way. Uh, actually, north is, north is that way from where I'm sitting. But uh, anyway, awesome knife. I'll give you a little little peek. Whoa, that's too much. I might as well show you. That was stupid. That's so stupid. This is a bussy SAR 3. Modified by the awesome Kylie. Knocked off that little, uh, um, little circle dealio so you can kind of wrap up a paracord for your full hand. It's just too small. Not necessary. He did an awesome job on this. Thinned up the handles. Smooth them out. I think one of his biggest gripes with the uh, Bussy standard handles is that they're just way too aggressive. But uh, awesome, awesome knife. Very sharp. Love the knife. Probably do a review in the future. It's hard to do a review on a modified knife because there's no other knife like this in the world. It's it's individual. There's only one. So why would I do a review? I could do a review on them in general and maybe like a, you know, not a torture test, but like a extreme demo test because hey they're touted as being one of the strongest knife models in the world right not necessarily they're, they're smaller ones but man they're they're tough knives well maybe i'll put it to test we'll see that should certainly be entertaining and then of course my favorite all right i've been taking up way too much of your time thank you very much nick that was again over the top awesome of you and thank you very much laura um equally awesome and the surprise was uh was was really really cool so I, I really appreciate, I appreciate all of you guys. Um, but right this second, thank you more for being extra special. So Nick, hope you uh, continue enjoying that hot sauce. Let me know when you run out because I have plenty more. So anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it as always. And I truly hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take it easy.